Hi everybody, this is David with Smirt, and today I'm going to show you a few office suites on the iPad. We're going to start with Pages. This is made by Apple. Um, it's their sort of Microsoft Word uh, competitor. Um, on the iPad, it's $10 just for Pages. You don't get Keynote or Numbers, which are the uh, equivalents to PowerPoint and Excel. Um, it's a pretty nice application. I'll show you some of the nice features. There is a big drawback to it um, that I'll show you in just a second. But uh, one thing to consider when thinking about buying pages is that it will likely have some iCloud integration with the next iOS 5 upgrade. So when you start pages, you get this page. These are some of the files that I have. If you tap the plus button there, you can see that you can create a document or copy a document from iTunes, iDisk, or a WebDAV server. Um, used to, you would be able to get a free service called DropDAV that would connect your Dropbox to uh, a WebDAV server so that you could download anything off of Dropbox into Pages. Um, that service is now a paid service, so if you want to pay the money to use it, um, that's still an option, but for now, it's uh, it's just not something that I can really recommend. The other option is to use iTunes. Um, we can show you how to do this in person, uh, but what, basically what you do is you connect your iPad to your computer, go into iTunes, ta uh, click on the iPad tab, go into Apps, select Pages, and then you'll be able to add files through there. It's pretty nice, but again, you'll have to use your computer. Once you tap the Create Document button, you get all of these different templates that you can use. Um, they're pretty nice, and they give you the names of them, but I usually just go with blank so that I can type up some notes. Once you're in there, um, you can see your toolbar on the top. You can type pretty easily. Also, you can obviously connect a Bluetooth keyboard. Um, you have different options for uh, uh, text styles, bold, italics, underline, whatnot. You can change the font and the size. Um, another nice thing about uh, pages is that you can create lists, bulleted, numbered, or lettered, which is very nice. Um, this is uh, pretty useful for typing up learning issues or other things during a tutorial or for note taking. Something that's not very uh, helpful is that you do have to tap back on that settings button in order to uh, uh, change the indentation of it. You can also add photographs uh, or tables, charts, or shapes to your, uh, your pages document, which is pretty nice. Next we have Keynote, which is Apple's um, presentation software. Uh, they have this software on the Mac as well. And you can uh, move PowerPoint files and Keynote files back and forth between the two. There's always going to be some formatting changes and whatnot. Um, that will mess things up just a little bit, but overall it, it's pretty nice and pretty usable. Um, it does have the same limitation as Pages right now, which will hopefully go away, like I said, when iOS 5 comes out. So when you open up Keynote, you see your presentations there. As you can see, Smart has been using this uh, application on the iPad for all of our presentations. Um, I'll just open a sample one here for you and show you how you edit things. Um, you have your, your uh, slides, and you can double tap on the text box and pictures to edit them. Um, you can change the animation uh, for any slide transitions that you would like, which is pretty nice. You can do that in the application. It will show you an example when you tap on it. It's not really the best application if you're going to do a lot of very complicated animations, but it does the job. Um, you can change presenter notes and settings, uh, all, all of those you can see there, uh, which is pretty nice. You can insert images from your iPad, uh, tap on things and change the uh, indentation of them, add bulleted lists, uh, change the font and whatnot. Um, it, it's pretty useful. This is just how you uh, see it if you're doing a presentation. If you tap and hold, you get a laser pointer on the presentation, uh, which is very nice and useful. Um, 
You can also change it to where you can see presenter notes when you're plugged into a projector or a monitor, which is uh, very useful. You can also see uh, uh, things like uh, the time that you've spent, or you can see the current and next slide, uh, which is, is very nice when you're actually doing a presentation. The next app I'm going to show you is Quick Office Pro HD for the iPad. Um, I think it's my favorite out of the three that I'm showing you today. Um, the reason is that it includes um, a word processing app, a PowerPoint app, and an Excel app all in one. Um, the problem is it's uh, $20 right now in the App Store, which is a little steep. Uh, at one point it was $15, so hopefully it'll go on sale again. Um, but I think uh, it's the biggest bang for the buck as far as features go. As you can see, um, you open it up and you see documents that are on your iPad in Google Docs or Dropbox. And if you tap the plus button in the bottom left corner, you can add any of those other services that you might have. So uh, Dropbox, Google Docs, Box.net, any of those other cloud storage options. Once you tap on your Google Docs, which is uh, an amazing feature because Google Docs are very useful for things like PBL and everything, you get a full list of everything that you have access to through Google. Here is a, a case that, um, that we set up in my tutorial group um, for our week one case in GI. Um, it's pretty nice to have it on your iPad. You can um, edit it, uh, again make uh, uh, lists and change indentations, uh, change font, color, paragraph, all of those things. Um, if you have it hooked up to a printer through AirPlay, you can print. If you shake the iPad, you can have it do an undo for you. You can save things as a PDF. Um, and also when you uh, tap the close button on the top left, it'll ask you whether or not to save and upload it back to Google Docs. Um, powerful thing about this is that through Google Docs, you can share anything in a uh, folder or just individual files with anybody who has a Google email address. This is really nice for tutorial because I can uh, change this um, app, I, I can change this document and everyone who I've shared it with will have it instantly. Um, we can edit it at the same time if we're on a, a laptop or something like that. Um, I wouldn't recommend trying to edit it mul with multiple people using this application, but for tutorial, if I create the file on my iPad, then everybody can look at it later and uh, uh, see the changes that have been made and also make changes themselves. Also, you can open up PowerPoint files using Quick Office Pro HD. Uh, this is similar to what I showed you with Keynote. Um, but very similar actually. Um, a lot of the same functions. Um, when you actually do the presentation, you press the play button up there on the right side. You can also hold down and get a laser pointer. It doesn't have the trail on it like uh, Keynote does, but it's not bad. It, it works pretty well. Um, I've used it a couple times and I'm pretty impressed with it. But the real power is that you can connect it to your uh, Google Docs and your Dropbox. Um, which is a function that isn't in Keynote or Pages yet. This is really why I, I like it. When you go back home uh, to the home page of Quick Office Pro, you click and hold on a file, and you can email it, delete it, or uh, open it in another application, um, which is very nice, very useful thing to have. Um, it really is uh, an excellent application to use for the iPad if you want to do office type things. Um, I don't have any Excel files on here right now or else I'd show them to you, um, but honestly I, I just don't have much experience with using uh, the spreadsheet capabilities of this application. Um, if one of you uh, really would like to see it, I will um, uh, show it to you in person if you like. The next program is Office 2 HD. Um, this is the cheapest of the options. I believe it's $10 right now in the App Store. And it does include um, all three um, programs that I, I was talking about. It will edit documents, Excel files, and PowerPoint files. 
it also does uh, connect to Dropbox and Google Docs as well. So this is what it looks like when you open up Office 2 HD. As you can see, I have my Google Docs and Dropbox connected to it. You can add more by hitting the edit button there. Um, I'm going to show you really quickly the GI PVL case that I showed you in Quick Office Pro HD. Um, similar tools up there. If you see the toolbar, um, has a little dot below it showing that you can scroll to the left and the right, um, which, which is handy because there are a few more tools, as you can see there, um, printing, undo, redo, that sort of thing. Um, that arrow on the left just pulls back to show you which uh, other uh, folders and files you can open. There's a save button, obviously. You can manually make the keyboard go away and whatnot. Um, pretty nice. There are some bugs that I found. When I uh, hook it up to a projector, it actually doesn't uh, project my screen for some reason. Um, this is probably going to be fixed soon with another update, but for now it, it's just not really um, working too well. It is very cheap and it's handy, but like I said, uh, if you're wanting to use it for PBL and you want to hook your iPad up to one of the monitors in the room, you're not going to be able to do it with this application. Um, it does open up PowerPoint files and Excel files. I haven't spent any time actually using this application for, for those, but as you can see, it will create new ones and open up old ones. Um, when you create a document, it's nice that you can uh, go into the settings of this application and change whether or not to save it as doc or docx. Um, which is important for some people if they don't have the, as you can see right there, format for new files. Some people don't have the newest forms of uh, Office and can't open DocX, but that's really not too much of a problem either.